So I'm making this video because I wanted to give you a tour of my website. This is my website. I'm really proud of it. Uh, that's one of the reasons I want to show it to you. Uh, another reason that I wanted to show it to you is because before I made this website, I used to just go uh, to my YouTube channel and grab all my videos and stuff from there. But now that the website's been made, it doesn't just have videos on it. It has a bunch of other stuff on there as well. And the videos are easier to access on this website than they ever were on my YouTube channel. So I use this website all the time and I wanted to show you some of the ways that I use it. So I'm from Queensland, so I click on the Queensland state. And when I do that, I choose the subject that I'm teaching. So let's say I'm teaching maths methods. This opens up. Now, whether you teach general methods or specialist, the first option here is the PSMT option. That's new. I just put it in like two weeks ago. And I am pretty psyched about this page. The reason I'm excited about this page is because it's taken me a long time to feel comfortable enough to actually make this uh, series of videos. The PSMT was like something that a lot of teachers weren't sure about how to do. Uh, but over the last three or four years, I feel like I've gotten a really good handle on it. I feel like I've got some good tips to share with students. And so this section is my attempt at that. So what you get is 10 videos, 10 videos that talk you through this document here, which you can download here and a little like template to help you get started with it. Uh, I think that if you follow the advice from the 10 videos there, you're going to make a really good PSMT, maybe a 20 out of 20. So this page is really like a link that you can just send to all your students. Students, you can just go directly to that link and watch these videos. They're really short, like you'll get through the whole thing in like 40 minutes or something. Um, but I think they're really worthwhile. So I'm super psyched by this page. I think you should go and check it out. Uh, that's not the only page that's useful, I think. Um, let's pick like unit four. Let's jump in and see what that looks like. So you get to choose your topic here. Let's choose topic one. Uh, I've upgraded the player recently. So you, it used to be like a big annoying video. It's not there anymore. You just pick the video that you want and it opens up. Now, if you were a student browsing my website, you might just watch the video in here. If you were a teacher, I would suggest that you would come to this website and do what I do, which is find the video you want. So let's find the video I want. Uh, I want this one. Okay. And then I click the share button and I copy the link and then I paste that link wherever I want it to go. In this instance, I might want it to go in my OneNote. So control V. And you can see it goes into the OneNote. Students can press play, they can watch it straight there, or they can click the link and it'll take them to their YouTube channel. So that's how I use it. For individual videos, I'm not sending students to the website, I'm bringing the video to the student. So that's how I engage with like each um, unit section of the website, unit one, two, three, and four. Um, probably the page that gets a lot of uh, traffic at the moment is the external exam question database. So there's one for general, one for methods, and one for specialist. Now, when you come to it, it looks like this. Let's get a better look at that. It looks like this. Now, what you have here is every question that the QCAA has ever shown us. Um, you have questions from 2020, from 2021, you have questions from a public mock that the QCAA released back in 2019, I believe. And you have questions from 2022, or at least you will in the next few days. I'm just putting them on the databases right now. Um, now, the way that I use this as a teacher is I come to the database. Let's say I'm teaching maths methods. So this is the maths methods database and my students have just finished working on a topic. Let's say they've been working on integrals. Uh, and then I'll have a look at what questions there are from integrals. And oh, there's a lot of them. Okay, let's narrow it down a little bit. Let's say I want, uh, I only want short response questions. 
And now there's still quite a few there. Okay. Um, maybe I only want simple familiar questions. And so I very early on in the learning, I've been doing it right now with my classes. I come to the database, I grab questions from the topic that we've been doing and I embed them into the learning. Maybe at the end of the week, maybe as like a starter question at the start of a lesson, um, maybe at the end of each uh, topic, I'm embedding those questions. And again, the way that I'm doing that is not by sending them to the website. Instead, I, as the teacher, uh, I right click, right click on each image and just click copy image. And then I go to wherever it is that I serve students things. So let's say the OneNote and I paste in the image. Um, you could do that in like a Word document. I'm doing it in OneNote. You could do it in Canvas or whatever LMS you've got. But that way I'm pushing those questions to the students, serving them those questions. Now, of course, you want to give them access to answers as well, or you'll want to look at the answers. Uh, you can do that by just clicking this little plus button. There's the image there. Click that, goes big, and you can, of course, right click, copy that image, and paste it wherever you want to paste it. If I was a student, uh, I would be doing exactly what I've explained as a teacher, but I would actually do it inside of the website. So I would just say to myself, okay, uh, what topic have I been doing? Well, I've, I've reset the filters. Uh, what topic have I been doing? Trigonometry. And then I might sort them. I might not. I might just dive into these questions and start working on them. That's um, if I was a student just jumping into the, into the website. Now there is one more page of the website that I sort of wanted to show you. And so for maths methods and specialist maths, I've got this section here, uh, Speranza guesses the methods exam or the specialist exam. If you click on that, um, what you get is a series of 10 videos that I made over the September holidays last year. Uh, so every video has four questions in it, four questions that I think wouldn't be out of place on an external exam. Um, so you can watch those videos in that order, which is the release order, and they go sort of from simple to more complex questions. Um, and they've got each video has a mixture of multiple choice and short response questions. But you could also just download this document here, which is the every question from the videos into an exam format. And each QR code, uh, if you scan the QR code, it takes you to the video solution to the question. So question there, video solution waiting for you right there. Uh, so there's that as well. So um, that's the website and that's how I use it. So uh, again, I just wanted to show it to you because uh, I know some teachers are familiar with the website. Some teachers are using parts of it but didn't know that other parts of it existed. So, and I know some students don't know that it exists. So uh, if you watch this video and you think, oh, other teachers should know about this or oh, other students should know about this, share it. Sharing is caring. I'd love for other people to use the website as well. Um, if you see something in this video that you didn't know existed and you uh, find it useful, maybe mention it in the comments or something. If uh, you use it in a different way to how I'm explaining how I use it, I'd love to hear that because that way I can start using it that way too. Um, thanks for watching.